OK, hello. To everyone. Hey, hi, Tom. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. How are things in Galesburg today? <laughs> things are fine. Things are OK, fine. good. Looks like you got a nice collection of football helmets behind you there. Yes, I do. You an Illini fan? <laughs> well, I actually am a Illini alum and I played two years. Oh, did you? There. OK, great for yeah. you. When do you guys, you told me, when do you guys start again in the fall? Uh, August uh, 16th, I believe. I just okay. looked at that today. Okay. Uh, yeah, August 16th is our institute day. All right. First day was 17th of students. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because this past year you were after Labor Day because of the construction. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I knew everybody's schedules were going to be different. That's why I'm recording this and uh, we'll go through things. If you have some questions, sort of jump in. My, I'll try to make this flow so that the folks who um, are unable to be, be here will be able to, you know, know what's going on kind of thing. So want to just welcome everybody to our committee. I know that um, we're in some transition. Hey, hi, Jared. Hey, Jared. How are you? Pretty good. Good. Jared Rakowskis, like you meet Tom Hawkins. Tom, it's Jared. Nice to meet you, Jared. Jared is uh, coach at Normal West. And Tom is the principal at Galesburg High School. And so, Jared, thanks for being here. We were just jumping into um, things, and I was just welcoming everybody to the committee. You can see um, who everybody is. I think I mentioned that in an email as well. We're excited um, to have year one of eSports under our belt, and we're in some transition. And I may have mentioned this in my email, but just so everybody's got full context, when we were starting the program um, a number of years ago, our board of directors wanted to really have a larger cross-section of involvement from folks around the state than are normally on our advisory committees, with the idea being once we got the program up and running, we would transition into a more what I'll call normal looking advisory committee, and you can see that here. We have, like we do with our advisory committees, representations from coaches and an administrator. We hope and know that everybody will bring their own perspective to the group. Uh, and I would mention that Amy uh, Whitlock from Oswego East and Jeff Pittner from Rockford Guilford had served on our original committee. So I think they're going to be able to offer some really good historical perspective along with good ideas, but they'll be able to give you a little bit of a sense of the types of things the committee's talked about as we move forward. Um, Jared, I'm going to let Tom, you know, we're recording this. I'll let Tom introduce himself to the group real quick, and then I'll let you uh, do the same. So, Tom, if you want to just introduce yourself to your uh, committee members, that'd be great. Hi, my name is Tom Hawkins. I'm principal at Gillsburg High School in Gillsburg, Illinois. I appreciate this opportunity to serve on this committee. I'll, I'll just be up, up, up front and honest. I'm probably going to learn, uh, be a complete sponge because I, I'm not much into esports, but um, when I got, I got it here at Gillsburg, and, and it serves a great number of our students, and we're really proud to have that. So I'll be learning a lot from every one of you. So thank. you. We're glad to have you on board, and uh, believe me, I am a sponge as well. <laughs> but I've, it's been a really cool journey, and uh, you will. You'll learn a lot, and you'll sound really cool around your children, your students, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> as my boys always, you know, shrug and go, oh, Dad. Anyway, thanks for being with us. Jared, would you like to introduce yourself to uh, to Tom? Yeah, Tom. Jared Rakowskis. Um normal west high school 
I've been doing esports for a couple of years now, and I'm excited to help contribute to the future success of it in Illinois. Jared's uh, had a number of uh, winners this year at our state finals, so we're glad Jared's on board. He'll bring a great perspective. Of course, Jared, the question on everybody's mind and when they watch this recording is, uh, can you claim any of uh, any of Leah Marlene's success? Can no, I, I cannot. Oh, all right. Well, we were still proud of her here in town anyway. Uh, OK, so the thing I wanted to just talk for a few minutes on today and I'll take any and all questions anyone might have, I want to just again touch on process and procedure i want to talk about sort of where i see the committee going uh and probably the first big question that we need to address is game selection for next year and then i want to provide a short update on uh play versus because i know recently uh schools at least coaches received some correspondence from play versus so i want to give you a little update on that and because the committee's in transition, you know, typically, as you hopefully have had a chance to review the advisory committee manual, if not, if you could invest 15 minutes into reviewing that, it would be great. But the idea is our advisory committees offer the perspective from a statewide view or, you know, from their individual areas they represent to the overall program. Typically, we're going to focus on terms and conditions changes, but this is a group this eSports Advisory Committee that I think is in a little bit of a unique space because uh, the very nature of how things could change on a yearly basis, I think there's going to be a need for the committee to probably in the future meet earlier than would when it's going to occur this year. And you're going to see that here shortly. Um, ultimately, the committee makes recommendations that the IHSA Board of Directors either will approve or not approve. Generally speaking, advisory committees meet shortly after their state final has completed. And a lot of times, spring sports and activities, which is where esports finds itself, meet at the beginning of the next school year. And I'm not sure that's the best model for this group to follow. So as we work together, that's going to be one question that I try to push the group on to get a sense of if we uh, can continue that or if we should look to meet in a more uh, a more immediate fashion following the state finals. In the current setup, the board of directors will review any recommendations this committee makes in October and they can then be implemented later in the school year. Um, and maybe that timeline will work. We'll just find out as we go through things here um, this year. So as we think about this upcoming school year, the committees meet annually, and we're really expecting next year, barring something uh un, unusual occurring between now and the start of next school year in terms of the you know the, the covid or the pandemic situation we expect to be uh hosting in-person meetings again next school year we've been virtual for the past couple of years it feels like the tide has turned enough that we'll be back in a more traditional setting i'm sort of throwing out there today that we meet on Thursday, September 1st. And that would be a meeting here in our office. It would begin at 10 a.m. Um, it typically, you know, the, the meeting runs until the agenda is complete. Generally, that's around a three hour meeting. We serve lunch during, we sort of have a working lunch typically during the meeting. Um, but I want to sort of throw that date out there and maybe ask you to look at your calendars. And if somebody or if some people can't make it, we can look. We have the flexibility to try and, you know, find a date early in the year that will work for everyone. But I think it's important that we meet early so we can begin to address this question of what games will be offered next year. That's been the one question, the one recurring question I've gotten a lot since the state tournament ended back on April 30th is what games are going to be offered next year. It was always the vision of the advisory committee, the original committee, 
that this group would review that on a yearly basis and make decisions if new games would be offered or not. And I guess and this would be a really probably a question more for the coaches than anyone else, something to think about and to help our office is, you know, how how critical is it to, I mean, how, how essential is it to know? I'm sure it's the the sooner a, a person would know what games are going to be offered, the better. But is if that's an announcement that doesn't come out until October, after our board would meet, is that enough time for people to get ready for a April State Series event, or is it better and maybe more necessary that we can tell people in June? Hey, here are the games that are going to be played next year. So I think that's something I'm going to ask you to think a lot about and help me navigate things so I can make sure these meetings occur when they would make the most sense. Um, and so as I point out here, it might be necessary that we do a virtual check in this summer. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that in, in just a moment. So. I guess after people have a chance to review this, unless I hear Thursday, September 1st doesn't work for people, that's going to be the day we plan to meet in our offices in Bloomington. So when we think about, and I should have put on here, but I guess I'm making the assumption, having talked to Tom and the rest of the folks being coaches, we remember that we played, uh, or the games that were offered last year included Rocket League, NBA 2K, and Smash Brothers, and we played Smash Brothers as singles and as duos. And so I think as we look forward to this coming school year, the question becomes, what do we want to offer this year? And I just put together a few questions that I think we do need to keep in mind. Um, and again, this is where your experience in the space will be helpful. What's the interest level of students? Uh, the availability of titles, you know, we we're able to put on a state series that didn't re, it didn't require us to use a third party provider. Maybe that's a road we want to go down. But if not, then it's really critical that we're picking titles that are available to us. What kind of technology and equipment will be needed for play um, as well as anything else? Now, I know that some folks on the committee will probably have some ideas, good ideas about how certain games should be played. I know I had a chance to talk with a few coaches around the state this past year who would have liked to maybe seen one or two of the games or all the games have a little different nuance to the rules that were laid out. And we can certainly talk about those, but I think the broader question that we want to get answered sooner rather than later is what games are going to be offered. Um, the, the rules that will follow for each game which were found in the game summaries on our website, that's going to be done behind the scenes and sort of subgroups. And that's what I think you should expect we would do. Once we decide what games are going to be offered, we'll probably, you know, split the group into subgroups and let people work on, here's how we're going to play game A and here's how we're going to play game B. And then we'll come back together and review that collectively. Before I'm going to, I don't want to, I don't want to jump ahead into the play versus piece. So um, with that as a little bit of a backdrop, does anybody have any questions or comments they want to make about uh, games for next year? You know, Jared, you, you, you probably have as good a pulse within the coaching community as anyone. Um, have you heard from coaches about playing different games and what those might be? Yeah, I think it what it comes down to is, is uh, when we look at those, those random areas of consideration, the games that we pick are going to have to definitely be able to reach those levels of, of consideration. So um, in terms of games we offer, I think those we offer this year are pretty good. Um, if we keep to council based games, if we maybe explore those as options, it has less hardware titles or hardware restrictions for us in terms of running tournaments. It's a lot easier to run a um, like a larger smash tournament or a different form of smash or even like a Mario Kart than it is for us to run, let's say another um, PC based game because that requires it's hardware right. intensive. So. 
Yeah, I mean, that's sort of where I'm at. You and, uh, you know, Tom, your school, I think, participated in the sectional at uh, Landmark in Peoria. Um, Jared's group, his sectional, we struggled to find a host. Not that we didn't have people willing to do it. It was just hard to come up with all the infrastructure in sort of the narrow window of time that we had. So I sort of agree with you, Jared, that I think console games lend themselves a little better to what we're trying to accomplish, but that doesn't mean we can't explore the computer-based games. We just have to think our plan very clearly what that would look like. And at one point, um, and then I'll let you speak there, Tom, is the original advisory committee, when there was talk of maybe um, League of Legends being a game that was going to be played, the committee had it sort of mapped out that um, in the two weeks leading up to the sectional tournament, the schools in a sectional would meet virtually, you know, two weeks out, you'd play the quarterfinal round, four days later, you'd play the next round. You'd get down to the final four, and then you'd play the final four out at the sectional. So we have some flexibility to do things like that if we want to take on you know, that kind of a, of a project. We felt like that was doable. It still kept the, uh, the showing up and playing together under one roof aspect, recognizing we wouldn't be able to get through all that if we tried to do it in one day. We struggled hard enough with Rocket League a little bit. But Tom, go ahead. You were going to say something or ask something. So, you know, I, after speaking with you, I spoke with our coach and um, I asked, you know, I, I'm once again, I'm, I'm only sharing his uh, input into other possible future games because I, I've, I've heard of them, never played them, uh, but I did, I, I thought it would be necessary to share uh, the ideas that he threw out uh, as far as like battle type games. He says you already do Super Smash Brothers. He has that notified uh, League of Legends is something. And I'm not knowing if I'm saying this next one correct. Dota 2, uh, Smite, StarCraft 2, Overwatch, or Pokemon Unite. Uh, in regards to Overwatch, you know, I, you know, our car conversation was whether or not you know doing the first-person shooter games in today's climate. Uh, he, he basically said that it's a cartoon-based game. Overwatch is. It's uh, not any more violent than Super Smash Brothers. Uh, but he also said it's the biggest uh, televised pro esports, one of the biggest pro sports e game. Uh, sports series. He had FIFA series, MB2K, which is a looks like that's already an IHSA game. Mm -hmm. um, MLB, the show. He also put Rocket League, another IHSA game. And then some other ideas that he had considering um, Illinois being a, a large agricultural state, uh, maybe doing a farm simulator. Uh, also, Minecraft, 10 minute chess, and Age of Empires. Uh, so, okay. I've shared those ideas. I've I've seen the advertisements on television. Okay. I've never played them, so uh, take that for what it is. But I, I wanted to really share those out there for for. Uh, I'll uh, I'll do some recording. research. Okay, are those? I mean, a lot of those names I've heard. Jared, are the those are you know popular games? I guess I'm looking for some affirmation kind of thing not that we're choosing those today but uh those are games that a lot of students know of and play yeah correct okay well i think you know i think what we'll want to you know talk to folks about or continue to think about on our own is you know what games make sense you know the the original committee and i'll try to stop referring to them as that but the previous committee wanted to get the program up and going, wanted, did not want to bite off more than we could chew in the beginning. And so I think, you know, a lot of these questions are tied in. Do we want to continue the same kind of approach that we did this year where we sort of follow the, the model that we use in other sports and activities? We bring people together and play. We advance the, you know, the people that win to then a next tournament. Or do we want to do something? And if we do that, then that probably gives us some direction on the types of games we want to steer towards. Or do we want to use a provider? And if we use a provider that brings in things like costs and, you know, doing things virtually. Uh, so I think those are 
you know, questions we'll have to wrestle with as a group. And I guess I would ask you to think about those, you know, individually so that when we get together, we can decide. And maybe we decide this year we don't want to really do anything in terms of changing games. We want to keep the games. Maybe we just want to tweak how they're played. That's always an option, too. It's not as though we have to change things. But I think over time, it'll be prudent for this committee to continually examine what's being offered, which is different, you know, than in other sports and activities. So I think what I'll plan on doing is having us think about this. I'll follow up probably on Friday with um, the link to this meeting and sort of an email that lays things out with where we want to maybe try to go this summer. And then maybe when we do have a virtual check in, we can begin to narrow some focus and see if we want to start looking at other games or if we think it's better just to stay, stay where we're at. And we can then see where that takes us leading into our September meeting. But I think that would probably be prudent to have a short check in midsummer. The last thing that I'll mention then is uh, this play versus update because I think it was a long week ago, as I mentioned when we started our meeting, that coaches received some notification from play versus where um, play versus was identified as a preferred partner of the IHSA. I know I've received a few emails about what does that mean? And so we're in the process of putting together um, a memo, for lack of a better word, that tries to clarify uh, that position, if you will. You know, there's been no uh, agreement, no formal agreement reached with play versus. Uh, schools are not limited to, if they choose to, to play on any kind of third party providers platform. That could be play versus, it could be through IHSEA, it could be through some other group. They're not limited in any fashion at all. Um, shortly before the state series began, we were notified that Play Versus had acquired the exclusive rights for high school championships for NBA 2K. And uh, we were, our office was, you know, really given uh, no real option. Uh, you know, to do anything other than sort of try to figure out through some discussions with Play Versus how this could work. Play Versus wanted us to move in a direction with that that would would have required us to play through their platform, and we simply weren't prepared to do that for a lot of reasons. And long, long, long story short, one of the things that we ultimately agreed to is that they could for the time being, consider themselves a preferred partner of ours, which really carries uh, nothing other than that designation. There's no requirement at all. And so we just wanted to try to, you know, clear the air, so to speak, in regards to that. So nobody thought that one, an agreement with Play Versus had been reached, or two, that people couldn't explore other competitive opportunities if they wanted to. Some schools do, some schools don't. Sort of the beauty of our program this past year, you could sort of do your own thing and we just came together in late April to play uh, amongst one another and it seemed to work. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions on that either, uh, as well. We're certainly not, same play versus is not an organization you can play with, you certainly can. It's really, uh, you know, 